Welcome back. And another crucial story on Viewpoint tonight. And this is perhaps a narrative which is going to dominate as uh, we take this step towards the 2024, the Lok Sabha elections. In the run-up to the crucial state elections earlier this year and the big fight in the Lok Sabha polls, the welfare drive of different political parties has taken center stage once again. As in they try to woo the voters from Karnataka to the poll-bound states of Madhya Pradesh and Rajasthan and even the key announcements that have been made by the center. The aim seems to be, at least what is stated by the political parties, is financial assistance to the poorest of the poor. But it comes at great uh, cost to the exchequer. While time and again, good politics is bad economics. Getting the tag of ravery politics to buy the vote instead of a sound economic vision or a plan. The tactic is um, in, the, in the holster of every political party. But who draws the line between what is ravery and what is welfare? Because beyond politics, we have seen speed breakers in the rollout of such schemes due to lack of funds or poor implementation with long-term adverse economic impacts on the financial health of various state governments, for example. So are such policies actually thought through to boost uh, you know, the status of poor in our country? Or is it a last-minute electoral move to save the political face? We debate that aspect on Viewpoint tonight. gift that the, goes out from the government, from the Honorable Prime Minister personally to all the sisters. 200 rupees cheaper for everyone. And the DBT, the Ujwala beneficiary, the 9 crore, 60 lakh connection, they get 200 rupees, 200 rupees, 200 rupees, and they get more cheaper than 1100 to 1100. The price of LPG gas, which has been reduced, उसका लाभ गरीब बहनों को तो मिलेगा ही, लेकिन मध्यम वर्गीय बहनों भी उससे बहुत राहत महसूस करेंगी। हर महीने करोड़ों महिलाओं को सीधे बैंक अकाउंट में 2000 रुपए मिलेंगे। They are not very clear. How many applications have come? How many they have rejected? How many they have accepted? Reject for what? So ultimately. They have said that for everybody, APL, BPL and everybody, except income tax fees, everybody. So let us see whether they will give to everybody. Welfare or ravery, that's a question that must be answered on certain objective parameters. Economists have attempted to do that. Political parties define it as per their own convenience. Let's take that question to our guest as well. Shaina NC, the spokesperson of the BJP, Yash Srivasta, who's a spokesperson from the Congress Party. Mr. B.S. Arun, who's a senior journalist. And Mr. Santosh Mehrotra, who's an economist, joining us on the broadcast. Good evening to all of you. Thank you so much for joining us uh, on the show. Yash, uh, today was a big day in the state of Karnataka. And uh, the Griha Lakshmi scheme that was launched, it comes at a huge cost to the, uh, to the state exchequer. And earlier we have seen that because of the promises or the freebies, as the BJP calls them, that have been implemented in the state, it has come to the cost of development, quote-unquote. The government is on record to say that various development projects are likely to be affected because we have implemented these schemes. Is it good politics and bad economics for the state? Uh, Anusha, first off, these uh, schemes, as uh, BJP likes to call it, ravery, freebies, uh, I would want everyone to understand that these schemes are for the people, the very people standing last in the row in this country who, uh, who need this assistance to sustain, to grow, to evolve. Then if uh, BJP likes to call it freebie, ravery and whatnot, I would want to ask a few questions. First, why do they offer freebies? Why did Smriti Irani go and chant uh, Tera Rupai Kilo Shakkar Pao when she was uh, campaigning for elections? Why does Modi ji himself go and uh, flag off several schemes? Hmm. Why is it yes. ravery for poor people and that big revda for Adani and other big corporates that uh, uh, lakhs of crores of rupees loans hmm. were waved off? Hmm. Why is that revda not in question? Hmm. Then why do they not let us fail if freebies are uh, for the bad? They they stall our schemes in Karnataka by by halting the supplies of rice. 
when we announce Annabhagya for the people I'll of Karnataka. Yeah. So uh, they should let us fail and then tell the world that look, the, uh, the, this party failed, this government Shana failed. Ji, is we it, are the only is it sheer political so, convenience or opportunism that defines what is bravery and what is welfare? Because various similar schemes have been announced in a state like Madhya Pradesh as well, which is my home state. And even there, a lot of freebies are being doled out, which the government claims are yeah. welfare schemes. So where is the line and how does one really decide that? First, let's talk about the LPG gas cylinders. You know, whenever people talked about Ujwala, they always said, but oh, a gas cylinder costs more. Hmm. Now, what has Hardeep Puri said? He has said clearly that 200 rupees would be reduced. What happens when that money is reduced? That directly impacts every citizen. Hmm. Nobody is viewing where a gas cylinder is. Is it in Karnataka? Is it in Madhya Pradesh? Where it is? Hmm. Ujwala is a welfare scheme which percolates down to the uh, not just the health of a woman, but also the existence of the chula, which is the house. Hmm. You talk about schemes like Graha Lakshmi. If this is not pole bound and pole kind of a lollipop, where you're giving freebie subsidy sops, you're giving 2,000 rupees and the cost is 30,000 crores per year. Does the Karnataka government really have this money to give? Hmm. You talk about Ladli Behena. I want to contradict what uh, you know. a lot of people have said because this is for underprivileged women. Hmm. This directly percolates down to the poorest of poor. Hmm. Now if you look at the welfare schemes of Prime Minister Modi, whether it is Pradhan Mantri Avas Yojana, whether hmm. it is an Ayushman Bharat, a Jandhan Yojana, Mudra Banking, the list is endless because we have over 740 uh, schemes which percolate down as central schemes to every single state. This is to empower the downtrodden. If you're going to only have like what Mr. Arvind Kejriwal did, which is give free electricity, free this, free that, you are getting people to be parasites. We want to empower Boy, people. And how do you empower off. people? You can only empower them. Let me first, sir, I didn't interrupt. I didn't interject even once. I, no, no, no. One at a time. Let China and see finish her argument. Then I have to bring I the two other gentlemen make... into the discussion. 30 seconds to you, China Ji. Anusha, what one has... Anusha, what one has seen in Karnataka is nothing but a, a glorified bribe. You have people no, and political power in the south where they've distributed from phones to, uh, you know, all kinds of uh, electronics. No, there are various that schemes in Madhya Pradesh as well that have been the started. The there was there schemes, was allowances schemes, that were given schemes, to women in the state of Madhya schemes, Pradesh as a raki uh, gift no, by, by, by the Madhya Pradesh chief scheme. minister. No, no, no. A welfare scheme which works throughout year after year and is only improvised to uh, cater to every single state and every citizen is something that has to be viewed as a progressive step right. in a state okay. which is pole bound and where you are. I, I, I have to I have to bring another other guests also into the discussion, Mr. B. S. Arun, Mr. Santosh Mehrotra. Okay, go ahead. Is, is there really a standard to decide what is a welfare scheme slash what is ravery, what is really required and necessary, and what is a mere political gimmick? I'll ask Mr. B.S. Arun to make his comments first. Uh, well, very good. Well, first of all, it's... Mr. B.S. Arun, can I have you? And then I'll go to Mr. Santosh Mehrotra. Yeah, first of all, the Karnataka schemes were announced at the time of elections. And so are the Madhya Pradesh... Uh, uh, you know, schemes. I think uh, the chief minister announced just about three, four days back one more scheme. Hmm. And all these are definitely aimed at the incoming elections. Hmm. But then, you know, there is a difference in the sense that it is not color TV sets or uh, free telephones that are distributed, which can be called ravedies. Hmm. But these are schemes which are aimed at empowerment and welfare, which are going to go a long way in changing the uh, you know, spending patterns of uh, the different families, hmm. especially those below the uh, poverty line. Hmm. All, all, uh, in Karnataka, we have seen, I think that it has drawn a good reaction from uh, various beneficiaries across, uh, uh, you know, gender or uh, uh, the, the age limits. Hmm. So I think when, when, it's, when a government implements this, hmm. and it's, it's going to go a long way, but what is uh, worrying is that the kind of impact it may have on the uh, you know state exchequer because in Karnataka see this year uh, state government has said it won't give uh, uh, you know uh, 
uh, uh, the the local area development fund for the MLAs. Yeah, also, so, uh, so the development of- the development is directly impacted, and that's that's the key point I was coming to. That how do you really draw the line, Mr. Mehrotra? I'm sorry, you were you were interrupted. You were making a point, but I reiterate the moot question here: that political parties, depending on their convenience, can call it bravery or a welfare scheme. But are there real parameters that exist in the world of economics or in the world of finance to understand that what is really required? I remember this debate at once reached the Supreme Court. and the apex court said that look in law and in constitution there is nothing that the courts can do and there is no definition that exists that defines what a welfare scheme really is i'll i'll, I'll come to you shaina ji let mr mehrotra make his arguments i'll come Just back to you and seconds. give you the closing comments mr mehrotra please go ahead um anusha i think you deserve to be congratulated by raising the foundational question of uh, at what cost are these offerings being made to the population whether it is by one party's government or the other party's government the fact of the matter is that you pointed to at the cost of development or not so let's just look at the cost to development because the central government has actually increased its uh, handouts rather significantly over the last 8 or 9 years despite the fact that the health expenditure to gdp in the country is one of the lowest in the world it has under this government gone from 1.11% of gdp to merely 1.3% of gdp despite the central government actually announcing a national health policy in 2017 where it is promised that by 2025 the government's health expenditure state and center taken together will be 2.5% of gdp So in other words even in during covid it has not gone back up despite yeah. Yeah. this is point 1 yeah and a similar thing can be pointed out about education education expenditure in this country has for the last 8 or 9 years not gone up beyond 2.9% of gdp at least a, sort of 15 years ago it used to be in the region of 4% of gdp yeah. 4% of gdp So, so there is Mr. a real issue Mr Mehrotra I I believe you raised two very important issues that yes we want a, a well, we want welfare schemes in this country but health and education we shouldn't look at uh, ignore those two parameters and then keep them also that, into can context I, in I have last two minutes and I want to give that to the BJP and Congress for closing comments uh, Shaina NC first uh, to you please go ahead Okay Anusha I just have two points to make sure. when our prime minister says that he wants to empower people he talks about three fundamentals one is safety security education and that then a person should be financially empowered so they can take care of themselves do we want to do what the congress has done to our government uh, to our people of india they have only given freebies subsidies sops and at okay. what expense is the question okay. if you have a scheme like this in karnataka just before elections and you're giving out you know 2000 rupees welcome but do you have the money this is 32000 crores 32, where is this money coming from i'm sure the time uh, only, shaina ji that's why i'm interrupting only you only going to only go to closing comments from uh, yash shrivastava as well from to the congress party yash uh, do you really I'll have the money i, I believe i believe uh, in the state of karnataka as i said earlier the government is on record to say that we cannot release the local development funds so it's not an overstretch argument when i say that look these welfare schemes quote and quote are coming at the cost of development interesting points raised on the health and education front as well would you want to answer on those criticisms yes first off much of our money is yes. hold by bjp in form of areas various gsts and what not so uh, there is probably nowhere uh, no one has money except bjp then uh, about development schemes for bjp development is only spreading contracts to their favorite friends for us development includes health education society humanity and harmony talking, no no don't interrupt me shaina what ji. are you talking and about, about this well i believe uh, that's that's, that's all the time Shabandar. that's all the time that i have do and political double speak no, will no. exist as far as the entire politics is concerned and uh, we need to have a we do need to have a more informed debate and discussion about what is welfare scheme and what is exactly bravery culture in this country because that's the need of the hour and in the run up to the lok sabha election and assembly elections as well it's going to dominate the discourse it's a